West Virginia last time, we had 35,000 people. We had a place with the pack. This one, we have 10 or 11,000. Was it done? I mean, did people like they're expecting to go? They said, yes. I said, then we have to go. I said, what about Nebraska? I love Nebraska. What about Nebraska? Was it like, I mean, are the people expected to be there? They're expected, they said, yes. I said, we're going. But like Pete said, we have to go on Tuesday and vote. Because we're looking to break the all-time record. We passed Eisenhower. We passed Nixon, we passed almost everybody. We're just about ready to pass Ronald Reagan, who we love. We're just about ready to pass, we just passed everybody. And we have a lot of states to go. But we want to create such a record like they haven't had before. So if you can, on Tuesday, it'll take you two minutes, go in, vote. The, the stronger we look, the stronger we are. We have more votes than anybody. And don't forget, I started out with 17 people. And one by one, one by one, it's a beautiful thing to watch. So, we had a good time. I mean, it's, it's been an amazing experience for me. And I've never done this before. I've been a politician for 10 months. I've been a politician for 30 years in some cases, right? We're tired of being stupid people. We're tired of having these leaders, leaders down the drain, and that's what they're doing. We're going to have great trade deals. You know, in Nebraska, and I just wrote, I said, how's it doing business like with Japan? You send business to Japan. You don't send business to China, because China doesn't take your business. We take their business. They don't take our business, right? You know that. So we send, we take all of their stuff, we don't tax them, they send everything in, everything's beautiful. But when Nebraska wants to send their product, and they have great product, great agricultural product, which is... And you want to send your product to China, then okay. No, we don't want it, right? Now when you send it to Japan, where they send the cars in, no tax, very little tax, practically nothing. They send the cars in. When you send your beautiful agriculture, the best of the world, you send your agricultural product in, what happens? 38% tax. 38% tax. That's what you They call it a tariff. You know, a tariff. It sounds a little bit better, a tariff. But the whole thing, we're not going to do this stuff anymore, folks. We're not going to play the games anymore. We're going to let it go. You want to see a trade? Just take a look at Japan. Millions of cars come pouring in. You go to Los Angeles, the biggest ships you've ever seen, loaded up with cars, right? And you look at what we have. We send beef. Beef is very important, but it's not quite as big a product. Do we agree? Do we agree? Sometimes they send it back because they don't want it. Because the farmers don't want it. They send it back. And then we send it back. It goes back and forth, back and forth. And then they charge you much more. They call it Kobe beef. It's old. It's old. It's old! Who the hell wants it? And they charge you much more money. But here's the thing, look. There's a 38% tariff when you send your product. There's practically no tariff or tax when they send this. Who's making these deals? I can tell you Pete wouldn't be making that deal. On a federal level, on a federal level, it's ridiculous. We're being outdealt, we're being outplayed, and we can't have it anymore now. You've been watching all of the elections that have been taking place. And really, I mean, I really have. I've had, I've gotten to know this country so well. And, you know, it started with, it started with New Hampshire, where my first victory, I'll always forget, and, I mean, there's nothing like it. These beautiful, these beautiful valleys, these beautiful streams, and what's their big problem? Heroin. I said, what do you mean heroin? What are you talking about? Heroin. It pours in from the southern border. And I said, you know what? Oh, my goodness.
when somebody says bad about me, even as recently as yesterday, I'm allowed to hit them, right? Yeah. Scott hits a good drive, then he hits a shot, 
and he goes left, almost goes into the water. He hits this unbelievable chip shot, a flop shot, four or five feet from the pin, sinks the putty, wins the tournament, and all week long, I'm watching these horrible negative events about myself. And we have hundreds of televisions all around the grid. We have all these televisions where it's called the Cadillac World Championship. It's a big, big tournament. And thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people. And I said to myself, oh, wait a minute, I forgot about this. I'm supposed to go out on the green, hand the trophy to Adam and all the people there, Tim Fincham, the PGA Tour. And I said, wait a minute, what happens if they have negative big advance? They're going, because they said, and now Adam Scott, but before we get to Adam, we'll have a few commercials. Thank you very much. I said, oh, this is terrible. I said, turn the television, I told my people, get the televisions turned off. I had four, I got hit four times. And by the way, the ends are wrong. Yeah, for the most part. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the ends are wrong. They're lies. So I mean, there's one guy, one company, club, club for growth, program is out. They go out, they ask me for money. I said, I have a million dollars. I said, I don't even know where you guys are. I did it as a favor to a friend of mine. Would you see the club for growth? Give me a break. How about that name? So they leave. They write me a letter asking for a million dollars. I tell them no, and they advertise all over the place what a bad person I am. I should have paid the million, it would have been easy. <laughs> so what happens in Florida is they have these ads going on. And we have the election, and I win by a massive lens. And I actually told my people, I actually told my people that there's no way we can win, because I have been here for four days, and they didn't even, I mean, I want to see like a tide ad or, or a palm olive soap. <laughs> or Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola. I want to see any ad. I, I was dying to see like a normal ad. They were not. It was all political and it was all about me. It was all about me. So I said to my people, there's no way. All week long, I've been watching horrible ads about myself. There's no way. And I won by over 20 points. It was a massive match. You know, Jeb Bush was the governor, and you have Marco Rubio, who's a very popular senator. So when they set up this delegate deal, they said, you know, we want one of those two guys to pick up all the votes. You have 99, it's like the second largest after California and New York. You have New York, you have California, you have Florida, the big three. So they have 99 delegates, you get more. And it was supposed to be like, you know, you get a percentage. But they said, well, look, Trump, he won't do well. So what we'll do is we'll set it up. Winner take all. So our governor or our senator will get it. Winner take all. And then a poll comes out, and I'm leading everybody by like 30 points. And now they say, we, this is a bad thing. It must be a wrong poll. And they go back, and another one comes out. I'm leading by 32 points. So what happened is they tried to, well, maybe we can go back to the way we used to have it. This is terrible. And I ended up winning the state by a
But, you know, we went so many places, and now we go, and it looks like we're doing unbelievable, and we're way ahead in votes of everybody, of everybody that's ever run. Millions of people have come into the Republican Party, and we're going to win states that nobody else can even think about, right? You know. We got to win Nebraska. You know what? in Japan, which our politicians should be able to do, and I will make sure that China takes your product. They're not going to say, no, we don't want product, because they want to have it themselves. You know, they can send to us, we can't send to them, not going to happen. So I will get rid, just mark my words, because you know you have to tailor these speeches. You know the nice part about me not using teleprompters and not reading speeches? <laughs> You're for real smart. the audience, like when you come to Nebraska, I say, Governor, what do you think of your trade? Well, I don't like the fact that we have to pay the tariffs and this and that. That's a federal thing. The federal's letting us down. And I said, well, what about China? How are you doing in China? They will not take our product. So now I know these things. Otherwise, I'll be talking about things that you don't even care about. There won't be any more tariffs with Japan or the world. We're going to go with the opposite way to them. All I have to do is say, that's all right. You want to charge a tariff? to Nebraska for its beef? No! Then we're going to charge you a tariff of 38% when you sell your cars to the United States. If I think that the meaning of the meaning of the meaning you know, I'm so funny in my campaign. And all these other guys are getting a lot of money. But I'm so funny in my campaign. Take a look at Hillary, the money. Take a look at where she's going to go. Did you hear Bernie Sanders say she suffers from bad judgment? Is she right? I wrote that one down. Bad judgment. And it is. Look, the emails, that's bad judgment. It's also dishonesty. That's why we call her Crooked Hillary. So we're going to take care of that, and we're going to solve it. We have a problem, like in Indiana, one thing. And a friend of mine said to me, you know, you're about 12 points down in Indiana. And then a lot of people, including, I love Peter, but I think his brother doesn't like me as much as he does. <laughs> but I like him so much, I'm starting to like the Chicago Cubs again. He's great. 
But the last thing is there will be an end. So I had to win because they're all coming in tens of millions of dollars pouring all these different groups. They want to stop Trump. They call him. Why do you want to stop him? They don't even know. They had this one woman on. Oh, this woman. You know, I'm not even allowed, I think, to say she has blonde hair because she'll say it's sexist. You know, Hillary Clinton, he spoke harshly to a woman today. He therefore treats women better. I mean, this woman is out of control. It's her only chance. She should keep doing it because it's her only chance of winning. And do the women like me, by the way? Do they? They all say, he wins with the men, he's through the roof. The hell with that. I want to win with the women, okay? I want to win. So we're all saying that Indiana, great place, great people. I have some great friends here. The Hillbergs, there's some great people. And they all say Indiana is like the firewall. That's the way. So four or five months ago, I was 10, 12 points down. So I went there two weeks before the election. I made a couple of these kind of speeches. We had fun. We had tremendous turnout. I said, how am I losing? Nobody gets these crowds. I had one crowd, over 20,000 people. I said, wait a minute. When you have 20,000 people and other people, I don't want to use their names anymore. I would have used their names, but I don't do that anymore. Because you win. You know, you win, you don't use their names anymore. Right? Yeah. But other people would have like 300 people. They'd have 196 people. I'd have 20, 25,000 people. So I said, wait a minute. How do I have 25,000 people? And two days before, one of the other candidates is there, and they had like 200. And I'm supposed to be in second place? I don't think so. Anyway, I left, and I was up. Then I came back a couple of days before, and we stayed there, and it was incredible, and we won. But Bobby Knight was on the list, and Bobby Knight went around with me, and he went into those crowds, and they love him and me. And I'll tell you what, it was an incredible endorsement. And you know, endorsements usually don't mean that much. You get them from some politicians, and you get them, it doesn't mean. But when you get an endorsement from Bobby Knight in Indiana, it was something really special. It was unbelievable. So Indiana, which turned out to be, you know, it was going to be the firewall, it was going to be something I couldn't win. I won with evangelicals, bigly, bigly. But I won with evangelicals, I won with them. And what's going to be so important? in Nebraska. Because I think and by the way, I like ethanol, okay? Is that okay? So I go out and I have statisticians, one of the most boring jobs in the world, but they like it. And look, they do pages of stuff on the And it doesn't matter. What I told you, you know, one in seven manufacturing jobs lost since the uh, Clinton administration lobby to put China into the World Trade Center organization, the World Trade Organization. Nebraska is doing lots of things. You had a horrible killing here, as you know, in Omaha. And we don't have to go into it, but illegal immigration. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's happening all over the country, as you know, in San Francisco and Los Angeles. It's happening all over the country. And, and we're going we're gonna to stop it, folks. We're going to stop it. It's, okay. and it's not, it's not going to go on. And I looked at it and I read it. And we don't have to go over the names, but I read it. And what happened is horrible. But it's happening all over. And when I announced on June 16th, I came down the escalator with Melania. And they had so little of those cameras back there. The world's most dishonest people. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. They are the world's most dishonest people. Yeah. They never show crowds. They never show crowds. They never, I'm telling you, we had a crowd. Last night, we had a crowd in West Virginia. It was a stadium. It was, I guess it was an ice hockey. It was massive. You couldn't get in, there were tens of thousands of people outside, they were trying to get in, we ended up putting big loudspeakers outside, and, but thousands. 
And I come home all the time. I come home and I said to my family, I said to my wife, and I said to other members of my family, did you see the crowd? They go, no. Because we don't have too many protesters, believe it or not. Now, when we do, they make it a national story, right? If we have a protester, the headline, Donald Trump has protested. Look at this room. Any protester? I wish, actually, I like protesters. Because the only, do we have any protesters? Please, on the camera. See, camera, there's a protester over there looking in the corner. Can I just look into the back corner of the room right there? There's a oh, horrible protest. Oh. Now, the only time they show. So I come home, we have this massive arena. It holds massive amounts of people. I don't know, like, a, like an NHL arena. And it's back every corner. People are standing in the aisles. The fire department did me a favor. They let more people in from outside. And I come on. Oh, what do you think of the crowd? Well, I heard it because you know when you have 20,000 people screaming, it's different than when you have 200 people screaming. It's, like, it's a beautiful sound, right? But I have, but they never show. So I want some protesters. Did you see Hillary Clinton had protesters? She doesn't do it like she, she had protesters. Her speech was 11 minutes long. She left. I have protesters. And my people are the greatest. But we have protesters. We've had some protesters. We had one protester that was so loud and so obnoxious. He had a voice like Pavarotti. And the guy was way back in the corner with, I guess we had 20, 22,000 people. And he's screaming. And it was, you know, unacceptable. So I was rough with him. And I started screaming. I said, get the hell out of here. I'm screaming. And the press killed me. They said, the way he handled that was mean. It was horrible. I said, get the hell out of here. Donald Trump treated that protester horribly. It was a horrible thing to say. Uh, and that was one of my first deals like this, right? Then I went to another one. The following day, we had another protester. And I said, please, if you could, maybe you can ask him to leave. Please, please leave. That's okay. Don't hurt him. Don't touch him. Don't hurt him, please. And the press the next day said, Donald Trump is not strong like he used to be. So you can't win, Pete, you can't win. So it's terrible. But let me just tell you, let me just tell you. Our military is depleted, and we don't win anymore, folks. We're gonna build up our military. If you look and you study, and some of you do, if you look at our federal government, which is run by incompetent people, by the way, just in case you they've been working for five years on methods to keep our companies in our country. So corporate inversions and all, they're working on it. They've been working for years, ever since I can remember. Well, in the meantime, we're being drained. NAFTA is a disaster. NAFTA, signed by President Bill Clinton, is one of the worst things So what happens, what happens is we're looking at all of this stuff, and the only way you're going to do it is very simple. Carrier, Ford, Nabisco, they're all leaving. They're leaving Chicago in one case, they're leaving Indianapolis, the uh, carrier. Use them as an example. You tell them, listen, if you leave, they think they're going to move to Mexico, make air conditioners, sell them to the United States, no tax. Not a 38% down. By the way, see, I'm being nice. Japan charges us 38%. I'm only talking about 35% because I'm a soft negotiator. <laughs> so what happens is they're leaving. So they announced, you saw it four months ago, they announced on television, somebody had the cell phone up, the camera, took it, and this mid-level management guy saying, we're closing up shop, we're leaving, we're moving to Mexico, you're all fired. Okay, 1,400 people, good people, fired. So here's the story, folks. They're gonna move to Mexico. So I would stop the move. And you know, I always say, I know it's not presidential, but I love doing this stuff. I want to make the call myself. I have so many people that have endorsed me. The greatest business people in the world, Carl Icahn, all of these guys, they're endorsing me, they want to help me, they want to negotiate. But I like doing it myself, except it's so damn unpresidential. The President of the United States is not supposed to be calling up a damn air conditioner.
Christian comedy. But I'll do it anyway because it's fun. So, so I said, now I'd like to call them soon. Before they move, they haven't moved yet. They're going to move very soon. Say, so just so you understand, if you move.
win anymore as a country, we're going to win big league. We're going to win with our military. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We have the whole country. We're going to take care of our great veterans, our veterans are not here. I mean, Hillary Clinton said our veterans are fine, they're okay, and she wants all sorts of things to be given to illegal immigrants. She wants to take care of our illegal immigrants, the illegal immigrants. She wants to take care of them. She wants to give them Obamacare. Can you imagine? You're an illegal immigrant and you get Obamacare. And by the way, on the migration, we all have big power, but on the migration, we cannot take people in from there. We have no idea who they are. And by the way, they come into Nebraska, we have no idea where they come from, who they are, what they study. We have to do something about it. So here's the story for us. If we don't win anymore, we're going to stop winning. We're going to win big. We're going to win with the military. Win for our vets. We're going to win. We're going to win with the vets. The poor vets. Are there any vets here? Right? Am I right or am I wrong? Right? We're going to win for the vets. We're going to win with education. We're going to end Common Core and bring education to The wall's going to cost $10 billion. But believe me, they're going to pay. Believe me, that's easy. And lastly, we're going to make the greatest trade deals that our country has ever made. We are going to take back our jobs. We're going to bring back our businesses. We're not going to let businesses leave. We're going to get you to get rid of the tax in Japan. We're going to get business for you in Nebraska, in China, where you can't go. We are going to make our country so great again. We are going to be so proud of our country. You're going to be proud of your president. Now, here's what you have to do. On Tuesday, go vote. We got to break all records. On Tuesday, go vote. And in November, go vote. Because we can't have another four years of Barack Obama, which is what we get. Barack Obama. In my opinion, it could be worse, okay? It could be worse. So, on Tuesday, go vote. In November, go vote. I'll be back here. Don't worry, man. We'll be back. We'll see you back. so proud of your country again and we're going to start winning 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 and i keep when i say it people like it i like doing it we're going to win so much that you're going to say mr president we can't take it anymore we don't want to win so much we're not used to winning mr president sir please don't always win and i'm going to say no way we're going to win Donald Trump and everything he's talking about. Donald Trump and everything he's talking about.
You folks can either keep moving or move over to the grass. I understand. <laughs> He wants to leave this world to nothing. He doesn't care about us. He's winning. We're losers. He said America's not winning. America, America. And you know these refugees. You know, you know, we, you know, you know what we should be doing. You know, we should be doing. You know, you know what we should be doing. We should be using the money that we that that we waste on the majority of our military. Yes, I am. Yes, I'm graduating college. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change this world and make sure that people care about everyone here. I'm changing this world. I was a bleeding heart liberal. No, I care. I care. No, no. I well, I make my world. I make my world, and I'm gonna help make this world so much better than Donald fucking Trump. The Holocaust. The Germans are from the Holocaust. You guys are crazy. Do you not understand? I'm not crazy. I spoke the original.